over the years, PF embarked on a number of projects that have seen the capacity increase from 1,800 megawatts to about 3,100 megawatts. This increase in generation is not at the Kariba Dam alone. Yes, the Kariba Dam was upgraded to start producing more than it was producing. But we had the Kafuelo Wagoj, we had the Lunzua Hydro being upgraded, we had the Musonda Falls being upgraded, we had the um, uh, we had the Shuangandu coming on board. We also had the Mamba coal-fired plant coming on board and a number of solar farms have since been constructed across the country which made the generation to move from 1,800 megawatts when PF came into office to 3,100 plus as we speak now. Now, why should we experience six hours of load shedding when we have increased our capacity from 1,800 to 3,100? The reason is very simple. Government has prioritized exports of electricity to neighboring countries. That's just the reason. Yes, the water levels in the Kariba is a contributing factor. But we can have load shedding for about an hour a day or to the most two hours a day looking at the other sources of uh, power generation that the PF built over the years. It is therefore unreasonable and unacceptable in human demeaning that the government can continue exporting electricity while its citizens will suffer six hours of load shedding. In any case, power exports or contracts involving exporting of electricity do have a provision which is known as a force majeure. A force majeure in a contract is a provision that allows you to terminate contracts of export of electricity if you are faced with a calamity or an act of God. In this case, the reason being advanced by those in government is that the water levels in the Kariba Dam are low. And if the water levels in the Kariba Dam are low, it simply means that we have got an act of God because we do not have control on the amount of rain for that we receive as a country and also on the water levels in the Kariba Dam. Why is government failing to evoke the provision of the force majeure so that uh, they can stop, stop exports of electricity and make sure that all the households in Zambia, by the way, generation of power in Zambia is meant to benefit the Zambians and not anybody else. The Zambians must be prioritized in making sure that they receive electricity. You cannot gross over electricity supply in an e economy. You cannot gross over supply of fuel in an economy. Then you are going to kill the economy. Now, I don't understand a government that is saying they are building the economy can allow a six hour load shedding when they can simply evoke a force majeure to stop exporting electricity to other countries so that our own economy can thrive. 
This government sometimes makes me sick and worried because of being inconsistent, because of being unreasonable. Unreasonable in the sense that the same very things that they condemned are the same very things that they are inflicting on the Zambians today. When UPND was in opposition, when we had 1,800, mark that, underlined with a red pen, when we had generation capacity of 1,800 and we had a serious drought, serious than we had last year, they told the people of Zambia that it was poor management, lack of foresight, and poor political leadership. That's why we're having load shedding of about four hours. <laughs> Today, they are in government. PF increased generation capacity from 1,800 to 3,100. They are introducing load shedding for six hours. Ukulanda kwali anguka. Ukubomba kwali shupa. And for you Zambians, I feel sorry for you. I also feel sorry for myself and also for my children. Why do we accept mediocrity? Why do we accept people to be lying with a straight face when we can say no to some of these things. And I think, by and large, we need to say no to six hours of load shedding because it's not justifiable. It's not justifiable as long as we are exporting power to other countries. Why should we give people people in other countries power when we don't have the power look this economy of zambia is largely dependent on small scale entrepreneurship when you traverse the kalingalinga area you see a number of boiler makers welders making gates making uh, water tanks and all kinds of fabricated, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, equipment. Why do you want to be unfair to those boiler makers, those small scale entrepreneurs? When you traverse the markets in Zambia, you find saloons, barber shops. That's how people are surviving. Are you not ashamed? That you can leave those people nama baba shop babo ba well the batam pioku chula bambioku lale in sala in the meantime you are exporting power to neighboring countries. What kind of a government are you? What kind of people are you? PFD divorce a force majeure on a lot of uh, the electricity exports. But this government has made it very clear through the minister, we are not going to terminate or we are not going to stop exporting any electricity to the customers, the foreign customers that we are supplying now. Now, do you know the reason? It is because this government is a government of liars by the liars for the liars. Today, they want to tell the whole world that the Kwacha is the best performing currency in the world. Because the Kwacha's exchange rate is very fictitious. Very fictitious indeed. Flowerly and cosmetic. And I'll tell you why. The Bank of Zambia just told us a few days ago that they have used is it three, three point something million of, is, is it 300 million uh, dollars? I'm not very sure of the figure, but the Bank of Zambia did tell us that they have 
been putting a lot of our foreign exchange on the market in order to cushion the exchange rate. Now, for them to continue keeping that flowered exchange rate, they need foreign exchange. Where are they going to, to get the foreign exchange? Because one, the production of copper, which last year was 800,000 metric tons, is now 500,000 metric tons. Because Mopan is not operating at full capacity, Concola Copper Mines is not operating at full capacity. Now, for them to make up, to have more dollars, in order to keep the fictitious exchange rate, they can't stop export of electricity. Because now their main foreign exchange earner is the excess electricity that PF brought on board that they are exporting. Now their fear is, if they stop the export of electricity, they will not get the foreign exchange. And if they don't get the foreign exchange, it simply means they will have no money to cushion the exchange rate. So the exchange rate will go up to over 20, 20 quarter to a dollar. So in trying to cover up their lies of saying they have maintained a stable exchange rate, they are now caught up in a web of their own. Because you need a lie to keep another lie and a lie to keep another lie. But when you are telling the truth, you will not have any problem. I don't see any reason, countrymen and women, why the minister can say we are not going to stop exports of electricity, but in the meantime, we'll give you six hours of load shedding. When load shedding started, we had 1,800 megawatts of electricity. Today, we are generating 3,100. So if we have a problem at the, Car at the Cariba, yes, we'll have an effect. And that's what I've said, the effect should be not more than two hours of load shedding. The load shedding should be about an hour or two hours. Look, do you know what the six hours translates into the small scale entrepreneurs who use electricity? And by the way, almost all small scale entrepreneurs use electricity. If you switch off electricity at say seven o'clock, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you come and switch off at 13 hours. A normal working day is eight hours. So you've left this small-scale entrepreneurs with only two to three hours of operation before they close their shops, workshops, or whatever. Now, how do you expect them to make ends meet? How do you expect them to make profit? In Enderland and a cabin in the Falkland. Ubutungulushi leadership is about caring for the poor people. Governance is not a business. Governance is provision of social services. Making sure that all the citizens, particularly the poor people, are able to afford basic needs of life. Now, if your six hours load shedding will kill the small scale entrepreneurs who are in the majority, then you are killing the whole country. You are killing the engine of the country, which is a business or indeed commerce and trade. We were neighbors, in case people don't know. We were neighbors, in case people don't know. We were 
Muyaro namu 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 zaone is the next road. Aba iche babo. The late Peter Kapala was my friend. Jeff Kapala, Jeff Chiwe, who is still in Lusaka, are my friends. But I think by Kapala you can do better. For even I want to save the people. Make decisions that are going to save your mother here at the farm, S Bend, near Fisenge. That's where your father's farm is, La Peter. Namwaba shimishama light six hours. She didn't go over take a palapa farm. Paliba she in Nova Peter. Shala chita survive shan. Imon Mova minister in Mwajitako Jen said, Ya Butila, Palapa farm Pami and Nungama light in Ayabasha Jen said. Now, the cost of fuel is so high that even those people with Jen sets, they cannot run their businesses profitably because the cost of diesel, the cost of petrol has gone up. From the time PF left office, from 17 kwacha per liter to 28 kwacha per liter. So you can see that the cost of doing business, when load shedding started in the 2014, was much lower than it is now. And any attempt to load shed the people for six hours, or let me just say, to load shed the people for more than two hours, who kill the poor people. My mom ni na ni na papa. Takwa ten kwen kumbo. We should can say government you have a business man ya easy fine. Kusakama na fe business. Mwakano kusakama na mi kalile ya vantu. E misango ye nui ine. Ah, my mom ni na ni kwa ten yolu say please. Milo. Tomorrow, you are starting load shedding. Please, Bakapala, please, by UPND government, reduce the hours of load shedding to two hours. There is no justification whatsoever. Stop the exports of electricity. Enforce the force majeure. And stop lying to the people of Zambia all the time. Show them the true reflection of the exchange rate. Sort out the issues at Mopani. Sort out the issues at KCM so that copper production can go back to 800,000 metric tons per annum.